Hello lovely people, welcome to yet another exciting edition of your favourite sports show, Sports Hub, right here on V Nation TV. Yes, this show brings you everything that you need and the key word is need to know in the world of sports. I am Legitan, Legit Emmanuel, Nana Brandin and I always do this with my brother. Most definitely, my name is Eugene Evans. Now, don't forget to get interactive via various social media platforms on Facebook is VNTV and of course on YouTube and Instagram is V Nation TV. Now, for the coming minutes, this has some of the things that you should be expecting on today's episode. Now, the Sports Ministry of Ghana has no policy on stadium management and has also misapplied a whooping over 180,000 Ghana cities. Yes, we will get to know uh, more about that later on during the show. And also, the Premier League clubs are all set because they are starting training ahead of Project Restart. Now, more on some of the stories that we'll be tackling today. Sex dolls, yes, you heard it right. Sex dolls appear in stadium stands in South Korea. We'll get to know more about that story too and many other stories on today's amazing show. So please sit back, relax, do not move anywhere because right after this break, we'll be right back. Enjoy a wide variety of quality content on VNTV. Only on VNTV. Watch talk shows like The Opinion for political and social discussion. Sports Hub for all your sports news. I want to know what's trending? Oops, we got you with social media trends. Download VNTV app from Google Play Store. And enjoy all of our awesome programs. Local and foreign movies whenever. Wherever. VNTV. Powerhouse of Entertainment. You're welcome back from the break. If you just joined us, this is still Sports Hub right here on your favorite channel, VNTV. Now let's zoom in straight to your favorite segment and my favorite segment, which is Star Inspiration. And Michael Jordan has got this for us. <laughs> Now, Michael Jeffrey Jordan, also known by his initials MJ, is an American former professional basketball player and the principal owner of the Charlotte Hornets of the National Basketball Association's NBA. Now, he played 15 seasons in the NBA, winning six championships with the Chicago Bulls. His biography on the official NBA website states, by acclamation, Michael Jordan is the greatest basketball player of all time. He was one of the most effectively marketed athletes of his generation and was considered instrumental in popularizing the NBA around the world in the year 1980s and 1990s. Yep, yep, yep. The official number 23. Yes, you wear his shoes. Yeah, yeah, that shoes with a pair of Jordans. Yeah, he has some rights in that because it's a collaboration between him and Nike in America. All right, so there you have it. Our uh, star inspiration um, quote for today coming from the one and only Michael, the baller, Jordan for you guys. Now, moving away from star inspiration, let us see what we have for sports facts yes, for today. Yes, so sports facts. The question for today is, which African club has the highest CAF Champions League trophies? I repeat, which African club has the highest CAF Champions League trophies? trophies well do you know that do you know which club it is well this it's not about favoritism or uh, because you're from a particular country you can name any of your clubs <laughs> it's either they have it or they don't as simple as that so let us know what you think or who you think the team with the most cup champions league trophies goes to yeah when we talk about europa or europe or uefa champions league you could mention the likes of real madrid of having the most um, trophies but when it comes to the um, african clubs yeah which club takes that bragging right let us know on our various social media platforms and let's get interactive we would love to exactly. hear from you all right so now moving on straight to the first story for the day and let's start off on the local front and into the ministries and because i have a key stake in it i saw something i'm not happy about the sports ministry has no policy on stadium maintenance and has also misapplied more than 180,000 Ghana cities. It isn't that incredible. Like, I don't... Well, let's get to know more about it. So, an audit report on activities of the National Sports Authority and the Ministry of Youth and Sports by the Auditor General has revealed that 
they misapplied a whooping 180,494 Ghana cities out of 203,688 Ghana cities. That was meant to fix broken seats at the Kumasi Stadium. Now, it was the fee the Ghana Education Service in Kumasi paid to use the facility or venue for the intercollege sports um, competition or games. Now, the money is recommended by the report to be paid back. Which is so wrong on every level. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel that it, they have to be dealt with because this is an amount given to you for you to fix exactly. broken seats in the stadium. Mm -hmm. And they use that money for, for whatever reasons. I think that they need to pay and even pay double for it. <laughs> pay double. Well, it, it's, mm. it's remarkable because as I stated earlier, this was back in 2017. Mm. So the question is, why must always uh, maintenance of these stadiums be something that you can't really know the head or not tail? Because we always wait till the very end when that particular venue will be used for, for, some, facility, yeah, used for something. For that, that's when before we, we see start. the need to actually fix something exactly. that is broken there. Why don't we maintain, you know, once you actually build a stadium or mm -hmm. whatsoever, why maybe we should have the, like, say, policy, some maintenance policy there that you know exactly. that maybe every month or every three months, we have to change some things, or every six months we have to change something. Because that, then these kind of things will be avoided. Exactly, because now that we don't have these policies, mm. that is why, or that is what gives the chance for people to do whatever with exactly. whatever funds that comes to them. Because they are not mandated or obligated to use that funds to pursue a certain, you know, um, an agenda or agenda. It's not done. It's so not so my issue is, if there's, n if there's actually not a maintenance policy, so why then do you tell the people that you are going to use the money, that mm -hmm. amount actually for that purpose? When you know that, you and I know that, the ministry or the sports minister or so ever do not have that policy, the maintenance policy. Is it that you already have, even before you took the money, you have it in your back of your mind that... You're going to use it for something out. else. Yes. That, that is it a very really legit concern sense. if you <laughs> ask me, because mm. this is the, the question we're begging right now, that, look, if that money was meant to fix broken seats mm. in the stadium, why wasn't it done? I mean, it's a fee that you took from a body, an institution, because they use that facility. Yeah. So if you don't maintain it well, how would another organization come to use the same facility to give you the money and i'm very it glad that they sense. actually did the auditing into this mm -hmm. whole thing because trust me i have a feeling that if they didn't do any auditing this whole thing and they were best with everything because unfortunately what was the total amount the total you is two hundred and three thousand. and they embezzled how much 100 and over 180 i tell you I this mean, people, eh? pasta. <laughs> <laughs> the money is already done <laughs> hey, but this is serious <laughs> this is really serious wow. this is really 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 <laughs> serious and also, the auditors also noted that the mm. Ministry of Youth and Sports did not have a policy on operations and maintenance of the stadium. That's that bad. is not only that. The National Sports Authority did not also have a plan to operate and maintain the various stadia. They did not have a plan to maintain or, or, or to operate the various stadia. So we're talking about the Sipo in Takrade. We're talking mm. about... Um, the the Accra Sports Stadium, talking about the Kumase, you know, and recently Cape Coast Stadium that was newly, newly, newly built. So we asking, this is something that shouldn't be done as a country. You know, they also lack monitoring and evaluation strategies to evaluate performances of various stadia to ensure their physical and financial sustainability. I just don't get it, but um, it's good. At the end of the day, there are auditors there and they've audited this thing. I just hope that they watch it. But moving forward, I just pray that now they need to have, they would have they some should. maintenance they policy should. because it's, it's quite interesting that you build, you spend, they spend so much money exactly. to build infra infrastructures or facilities like this and there are no maintenance. It looks as, as though then you, you don't really see the future of whatever you've spent money to build. Very recently, Sincerely. they did not touch the Accra Sports um, Stadium until the Hinejan Sports Stadium, until um, the Women's Afcon yes, Games. That was I when they that. rushed mm. to renovate the place. I mean, we can't be doing that as a country. But anyways, let's move away from that and look at the second story. 
court yeah. issues. Huh? Court issues. Well, Asante Kotoko is in the news again. Well, this <laughs> time around, <laughs> well, court is what well, Accra court has actually actually throws out court case against Kotoko. Let's see the detail. The details actually of this story. Now, an Accra High Court has thrown out a case filed by former Kotoko player Emmanuel Klote against the club. Now, Klote was asking the club to get Kotoko to pay his wages for a period under which he was under a ban from FIFA. Now, the ban came into effect in 2015 when Kotoko, Klote, and Tunisian club Esperance were involved in a three way tussle. Now, the contention from the Esperance was that Klote had joined Kotoko when he had a valid contract with them. Now, on Wednesday, May 20th, 2020, the Accra High Court Financial Division ruled against him and went on to ask Clotty to pay an amount of 5,000 Ghana cities to Kotoko. This is so funny. <laughs> you, you take the people to court and this time around, you are asked to actually pay this amount to them. I doubt oh, if you have my that money. Well, you, know, you know what's crazy? It's more or less like, you hear this saying, that there's this Akan adage, they say, wow, who born, or sounds sort of tatata. Hey, bro. Okay, okay, okay. 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 <laughs> so, um, to my personal opinion, Clotty had no right mm. whatsoever. Had no right. Yes, you could blame Kotoko for not, you know, um, doing the due diligence to ascertain whether or not the said player, that's Clotty, was free mm. or was available for them to sign. But you, Clotty, you can't say that you didn't know you were in a contract. Exactly, that's, and that's one issue about Ghanaian players or Africa, some African players. They don't really read documented stuff. Because if you read documented stuff, in this case, you could avoid this case. No, because but, how know, can you have a contract a with, with Tunisia club? And at the same time, be playing for Kotoko. I haven't seen... Is it that you're going to divide yourself? You, I, I'm you, not even you, are, you are a professional player, so fine. Let's assume you're an illiterate, which it's not a sin. If it's understandable, but make sure you have... The Doesn't right, you, have you know, an agent or exactly management, someone or to just aid you when it comes to these legal terms, you know, and legal, you know, um, situations. But you can't say that you don't know how to read, so you're not going to look into a document. Now, who is suffering? And you had the nerve to say that Kotoko should pay you for for the time that you were you were you were serving your ban by FIFA. Are, are you, you are you kidding me? me? Since what, 2015, I think. Yes. Are you kidding? Kotoko is even suffering to, with <laughs> some other stuff already, and you they know, should pay you this amount. It's funny because mm. the initial fee that um, Kotoko paid to Esperance that should have been his pain. Exactly. Like, the money that and he that's should why be paid. I don't get because. The team actually, the team Kotoko actually spent a lot, a lot to actually bow you out, so to speak, out of this whole issue. And then this is the case now. You are coming to them. You've gone to court to tell them that they need to pay you some some amount. Why think, didn't you go to Tunisia? Then? I think the five thousand <laughs> is small. Yeah, I think. Oh, don't don't do that. Oh, the me. five thousand is too I feel, small. Yeah, or I the feel, Corona era. Okay. Yes. Then it's okay. Yes. But it's I feel. Okay. I mean, come on. He deserves um, such. Um, he deserves the fact that um, his case has been thrown out of court because, in the first place, you don't have a case at all. But you still, you still have advised. a right. You can, yes. if, if you're not, you know, uh, pleased with this, you can still a take it or something. Yeah, to a higher court. But please uh, don't do it. it if I were you, please don't do it. Maybe, uh, maybe just pay the five thousand. If you want higher court, you go, but you pay more. So it's up to you. Yeah, but I think this is also a wake-up call for mm. Kotoko, as we stated earlier. That yeah. there are some instances that. You a, can do a, your a, checks a, before you sign. A club. You actually signed a, a club like you when you are a, signing I mean, a, a player. You should do your checks. Come whether on. the person actually has some contracts with another team or whatsoever. Is it that you were too too much in a hurry to actually sign him or well, that caused them? I a lot. think it was just the, uh, negligence on their side and. Well, they paid. Well, the next time you want to lose a couple of dollars, just go by the same way. <laughs> but if not, there is enough. Exactly. <laughs> now moving away from that, but still staying in Ghana, let's still look in um some club or team manager frictions and all of that mm. but this time around it's not team manager it's actually manager gfe mm. and who is speaking malik jabo he is saying that my 33 months salary has never been unpaid I no, it's not like I doubt to. You know, before you even get to the detailed, uh, the detailed info on this mm. particular issue, it's not like I doubt to. Is it because uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> the wait. former coach <clears throat> came out to say that someone owes him, so, and then that's why he's also told the news to come out? Because I don't get it. Let me take it again, guys. He says that my thirty-three month salary 
unpaid by GFE. That is the Ghana Football Association. And Malik Jabo is saying it. The former Black Meteors head coach. 33 months. Hey, Christian Pierce should sleep somewhere. <laughs> because oh, his, talking, case, talking, his talking. cases cannot be compared ah, to that of this 33 and 5 months. And oh, 33 months. Oh. Not like 3 Christian months. Christian Pierce should choke. Hey. We have a real issue here. Hey, but this, is, this, <laughs> this is crazy. Really true. Oh wow. my goodness. So the former Black Meteors head coach, that is Malik Jabal, has revealed that the Ghana Football Association owns him 33 months salary. Now, according to him, he only received three months salary from his employers throughout his stay with the team. Now, the former Kotoko player who is also aspiring to succeed Otia Kenton as the next GFA technical director. Yes, he submitted his application. Right. Made these revelations in an interview in one of um, the local radio stations in Takrade. Now, for the past, this is what he said, and I quote. Now, for the past three years, I worked with the Ghana Black Meteors as the head coach. I was paid just three months salary. As of now, the GFA owes me 33 hmm. months salary. Arrears, which amounts to 99,000 US dollars. I was receiving 3,000 per month. So, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Okay. The money, the amount is mm. not really huge compared to Kwesia Pia. Ah, Pia. But yeah. the fact that it kept or it has, it has been accumulating for far too long. So that why is, is my he, issue. And my question is, why are you speaking now? Why not before? Because, I mean, you've been, he's actually been with them for about three years, right? Yeah. I mean, and then you've only been paid for three months, mm -hmm. I, I suppose. So then, why, why did Who he take you this long? Who have you been complaining Exactly, to? too. That is what Why coming out know. now after... That's why I feel that because uh, Kwesi Ape has actually come out to actually say that they mm -hmm. owe they owe him. He feels he get a vim Or perhaps now, now he, he has been doing it for a while but uh, has not been receiving positive response. So he feels like coming out to actually, you know, um, help him. I, because I, I, I don't know what's help actually happening at Ghana Football Association. Exactly but with all to pay heed to him. With kind of debts that people are saying that people, they owe them and all of that. So, trust me, they have a lot of work to do. Ket Okreku, this hey. is on your table <laughs> is yet again. Hmm. Yet again. Now, moving away from that, and um, let's still look into Ghana and to one of the country's all-time best attackers. Yes, we're talking about who poaches. That is the man himself. Baby Jet Asamoah Jan. Now he is in the news. No, no. Yeah, the balcony. Do you know how to do that dance? Yeah. Take your balcony. <laughs> we don't dance with our hands and our shoulders. It's the way. The balcony. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently he <laughs> likes dancing more than training. Yeah, I'm not the one who is saying this. <laughs> no, <laughs> I thought I thought the former coach was actually me, but I think you are you are more mean than. We tried to follow his footsteps. Are you kidding me? So now Jan will have. <laughs> um, a better career if he wasn't so lazy. Wow, wow! And this is coming from Have Renard. Yes. Now the Blasters general captain. That's the title he received when they took the captaincy from him um, to be given to the DIU. Right. So the DIU is a team captain, and he's the general captain. I didn't, I, don't ask me. So I don't I know what that means. The difference between exactly the, the two <laughs> positions, anyway. So let's go. <laughs> I don't know what that means. So, uh, Samuel Jan could have a better um, football career if he worked harder in training. That's according to former Zambia and Cote d'Ivoire coach, Harvey Renard. Now, he worked with Ghana um, when... Uh, he worked with Samuel Jan, I beg your pardon, right. when he was Ghana physical um, coach in 2008. Yes, when the country hosted the AFCON and unfortunately went out of the competition in the semifinals. They went on to, you know be placed fourth because they were beaten in the semi-finals and they were beaten again in the third place Charlie, that year, yeah, don't be gonna <laughs> yeah, so now he says that Jan only cared about playing matches and not too much about training mm. and also he was a very good goal scorer yes, everyone knows that a fantastic player as well, amazing player but he stated that and I quote but I have something to tell him. Mm. He was supposed to have a better career, but he was lazy. Renaud said, while smiling. Yeah. They will pay me. 
But I'm a fake smile. No. You understand? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, you can't take that away from him because mm -hmm. he, he was actually their former coach. Yeah. So I think he actually knows exactly mm -hmm. what he's saying. That this man actually doesn't enjoy training. But when it comes to playing the football, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. it's something, there. something, something. I think it's either Jan feels that with or without training, I can still perform. However, that's not the way to go. Yeah, you should that look is, at Cristiano Ronaldo. True. Yes, regardless, you still have to train because uh, no wonder you've been missing some interesting penalties. Well, Jay, I didn't say uh, that. This table that's you are your, shaking. This, this table you are shaking. That's what your former coach is actually yes, saying. Yes, but he did not actually mm. end there. Ronaldo mm. to continue that Ghana can only and only, the key word is only, win Afghan again. Yes, if the players are willing to sweat blood. That means if they really push and give in their role for the team. That is only when the Ghana a national team, the Black Stars of Ghana, yes, the senior national team will win AFCON again. Well, we hope that they will give in, they will sweat blood. Because as of now, people don't even want to sweat liquid we, like water. To even to sweat, sweat their blood. <laughs> <laughs> but wish them all the best and we just hope that, I mean, once again, we'll have the hope that we've always had in the senior national team and yeah. then maybe they, shall, they can actually go forward to actually win some trophies for us now let's talk about some premier leagues yes now, now premier league class, i think before we do the premier league right. let's go for a quick breather you think, i think so because i need yes. i need my i need to save my liquid right so, now whilst it's sipping that well when we come back we'll enjoy some more news right here on sports hub we'll be right back Enjoy a wide variety of quality content on VN TV. Only on VN TV. Watch talk shows like The Opinion for political and social discussion. Sports Hub for all your sports news. I right, want to know what's trending? Oops, we got you with social media trends. Download VN TV app from Google Play Store and enjoy all of our awesome programs, local and foreign movies, whenever, wherever. VN TV. Powerhouse of Entertainment. Hello there, welcome back. You're still watching VN TV. In case you just tuned in, yes, this is Sports Hub, and I am legit Emmanuel, and with my lovely gentleman, of course, right Eugene here. Evans. Yeah. Now moving on straight to our next issue or topic for discussion, the Premier League is all set because they have started training, and it's ahead of Project Restart. What do we have? It's what it is. Now, let's, let's talk more on this particular issue. Now, Premier League clubs have agreed to stage one of the return of training protocols, which allows teams to start training in small groups from Tuesday. Now, clubs voted unanimously on the decision at Monday's Project Restart meeting. Players must observe social distancing rules and con contact training is not permitted now the first stage has been agreed in consultation with players managers club doctors independent experts and the government the premier league statement added and it says strict medical protocols of the highest standard will ensure everyone returns to training in the safest environment possible and it also continues to say the health and well-being of all participants is the premier league's priority and the same return and a safe return to training is a step-by-step -step process. The Premier League had previously identified 12 June for matches to possibly restart or start again. But there is now an expectation this would need to be pushed back. Now, so basically everything that this talks mm. about is the fact that now the Premier League clubs have started training in small groups. But it is still training. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's enough motivation that the Premier League is coming back. That's all we need to know. But unfortunately, there have been some minor setbacks. It yes. could prove to be minor setbacks. I should um, Already, make you... Some people you know, have actually tested, tested positive, positive, which is yeah. very, very interesting. And they're from sad, three actually, clubs. So, yeah. uh, we're hoping... I'm we just hoping, hoping they won't call yeah. this whole thing off again. This whole training team, like, you know... Because uh, some players already, you know, stepping mm. aside from this, you know, training and it's, project. It's scary, to, to be we, honest. We, 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 even we, though we, we enjoy the football and all, I, you know... We have Watford um, captain, that is Dini. The captain himself says that, look, I'm not having none of this. I have a family to take care mm. of and I'm, do I'm not risking my family. I can risk myself and it will affect directly my family. So I'm not doing that. So and, um, in Gallo Conte, and it's also you know, contemplating whether or not to start training. So there are a couple of players that mm. are not really into this yeah. project restart thing. But we hope to see how everything unfolds and we're hoping for the best of course we all love to and see the game i actually back. understand their fears considering the fact that mm -hmm. even with all these measures put in place yeah. and you still 
actually gets the, all these cases or these new well, cases of positive coronavirus cases. But still, on all this, mm. one thing that she also lets you uh, be aware of is that Italian Football Federation is also set 20th August as the deadline or the end date for the season. And they are even making plans to rest or begin a new season in September. So, <laughs> them there, Charlie, they're not listening to anyone. Yeah. One country too yeah. that's not listening to anyone is Germany because they have already restarted their Premier League. It's behind closed doors, yes, of course. But still, the Premier League or the, the, their league is ongoing and um, some teams are making headway. Yes, teams like Dortmund and Bayern Munich, they are proving to be title contenders, yes, winning games and here and there. So, Everything or whatever that unfolds on all these happenings, we will definitely bring it to your doorstep. Now, what do we like have? How sports have that. That's what it is. Now, what do we have in, in, in the boxing front? Yes. So, now, let's do some noble act of self-defense. That mm. is boxing. Yeah. yeah. This is our final um, topic for the day. And um, it says, and I read, you either fight or vacate the title. Vamoose the uh, title. Yeah, the, the energy alone. You the get up. This guy, they take talk. This will be, be confidence. <laughs> so who is saying this? It is Kut Brat um, Pulev to Anthony Joshua. Yes, British very own Anthony Joshua. Now, Pulev says he will not step aside from his shot at the world heavyweight belt and warned Anthony Joshua, you either fight me or just vacate the title. Now, the Bulgarian is mandatory challenger for um, Joshua's IBF title, but they are... <clears throat> I beg your pardon. Their planned bout on 20th June was postponed. Yeah, of course, because of the coronavirus. It led to talk of Pulev being paid to step aside so Joshua could face Tyson Fury, also a British, for all four heavyweight titles or belts. I can't understand why we are still postponing instead of fixing a date and venue and getting to work, said Pulev. He also stated that I see how people are afraid of me. And are trying to face someone else before me. That's not how a real world champion should act. Eesh. Pressure. Pressure. Just <laughs> more, more, more. You do that and go beat yeah, him. Two rounds. <laughs> <laughs> so that is what uh, Pulev is actually saying. He's not happy. The fact that they want to push him aside. They're actually paying him to, you know, hey. That, that is bad. It's, it's as though, I mean, you're making it look like, you know what? We don't need you. We don't you're need not you. a competition. Yeah. We want someone else. We want a bigger competition. competition. Wow, that's an insult to his But career. he has an upper hand because, mm. as um, he stated, he is a mandatory challenger. So, Anthony Joshua doesn't have a choice than to face him. If not, he has to vacate the, the belt, as Pulev stated there. So, one thing that you should note is that Anthony Joshua holds the IBF, WBA and WBO belt and has talked of his desire to face WBC champion Fury. Now, who is due to face the anti Water for a third time? when boxing returns following its shutdown because of the coronavirus pandemic. Now, this is where we'll draw the curtains on today's amazing show. It has been Sports Hub. Anything to say before we wrap up? Yes, before we end it all, let's not forget that we've got the Sports Facts question of the day mm -hmm. to answer. So the question was, which African club has the highest scarf Champions League trophies? What is the answer? Should we tell them? I think we should. It's about time. Okay, in three, two, one. one. There you have it, yes. El Ali of Egypt. They have actually won it a whooping 20 times. They are not joking. Yeah. 20 times they have won it, followed by Zamalek. Yes, also there. So, they are actually a great, 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 big contender when it comes to Champions League football here in Africa. They, are, they have been conquering teams. They are teams that Ghanaian clubs always are afraid to face because, Charlie, they mafia them when they go to Egypt. Ghana here, they play one one. One one or draw. I'm just praying as as Santi Kotoko actually get the one door hats of full combo. Just pray. Well. But anyway, until then, ladies and gentlemen, this is where we end it all right here on today's edition of Sports Hub. My yeah. name is Eugene Evans. And I am legit and legit man wo. Nana Brandon. Thank you guys so much for being part of the show and continue to watch V Nation TV. Get our app on Google Play at V Nation um VN TV and also on our social media platform VN TV on Facebook and at V Nation TV on Instagram and also on our YouTube channel. Make sure to subscribe and also comment. Tell us your opinions and suggestions. Till we meet next time. See you.